Yeah, exactly. They're mohawks, <laughs> large chains. Well, they're not here today. Jin Air for Zanarchy. Picks and bats for game number one, and there is that Zed ban against Mickey. A pretty common sight. Can't let him have it. Yep. Uh, we sometimes see three mid bans against Mickey, especially from teams on the blue side. Well, he really is kind of the primary. Well, he's definitely the primary threat, and a lot of times the only threat on yes. Anarchy. So Annie yeah. taken out immediately. No Callista or sign of rise quite yet. There's Ari. Okay, so we're doing this. It's probably going to be Twisted Fate for the last ban from Jin Air. They're a big TF so. team too. We know GBM loves to prance around the map with a <laughs> teleport Twisted Fate, but... And prance really is the right term yes. for Twisted Fate as well. I, I totally agree. Especially for GBM's Twisted Fate. Interesting bans coming out on red side uh, in Italy after the Annie. There's TF, so they're getting close to or Rise at this stage. Yeah, or potentially Elise too. Now, I'm surprised that Rise has seen so many bans tonight considering his nerfs. You have a lot smaller window right now. Uh, to execute your big combo with him. Yeah, the uh, all's down to six seconds round. Yeah. Makes it a bit tougher. This is 40% uh, nerf. That's pretty huge. So they're yeah. going to leave it open. Callista, all right. And just another reminder, we are on 5.14, and that's going to be a rise first pick for Trace. Maybe for GBM uh, as well, too. But So Lira uh, gets the Elise. That's a big pick for them, considering yeah. the strength coming out of their jungle. They are one of their better players. So the rise, is that going to GBM? Are they going to let Trace play it? And they're gonna lock in Victor, so it will be Trace playing it. One of the few times we will see Trace play a carry top. Has played some Hecarim, wasn't great on it, but so a big change. Trace, known for not getting very many of Jyn Air's resources. He's going to need more in this game to scale properly. And what's that other pick going to be? And uh, again, since we're on 5.14, that mid Ezreal not as much of a threat as it was before anymore. Oh no, it's it's not good anymore. It's gone. It's done. Will it be the Corky? Fits. Corky would be fine. Yeah, of course, pretty standard 80 carry for pilot, Rex but they will well. take the Rexai instead. That's an early pick. No need to show the Corky quite yet. You can deal with not having it. Sangu. Instalock solution. Wow. That has been one of his better champions this season, too, and it's certainly something quite a bit safer than Jinx. So I agree with that. Will Mickey go for this Orianna, though? I mean, they've got a lot of pick potential right now, and if Lucian's dealing the damage, could be very good. The Azir. Oh. Okay, so we will see the Azir after his uh, attack speed changes in 5.14. Again, he gets uh, a ton of attack speed from his W. Great siege composition for Anarchy, though. Yeah. Uh, Azir obviously still good at sieging, even if he can't combo as effectively by pushing somebody into the enemy team, or your team, rather. Yeah. But you have a ranged jungler here, Lucian and Azir, so you're going to have some nice punch in the mid game for taking down towers. They could answer this with some Corky from Pilot. Corky Alistair, very stable lane but they will have some trouble. Lucian and Braum is not a good lane to take Corky into because your trading is just going to be blocked. Your Phosphorus Bomb will be blocked by Unbreakable and then you'll have to deal with a Lucian getting procking his passive on you. True enough. Wow, they might switch over to the Vayne. I think the Corky is a little bit better to go with here. Yeah, I wouldn't go All for right. two scaling champions. You have the rise. Don't worry so much about that. Focus on the wave clear and the defense right now. Yeah. And that's what it's Ooh. going to be. So Nar for Ixu in the top side. Not a huh. champion that he has played a whole lot. That is a lot of CC on Anarchy's side. This is a team that you can be aggressive and skirmish with. This is a team you can poke with as well, too. It'll be interesting to see how they play it out. Yeah, I, I think it's good for Siege. I do not think that they have a strong primary engage here. Uh, at least with a single target CC and not moving herself in there automatically is a bit riskier compared to something like Maokai, especially since Maokai has follow-up CC after he goes in. So they can rely on picks to a certain degree, but Jyn Air, uh, there's basically no way to get back onto Victor for Anarchy. That's not a very good sign because GBM will have a lot of freedom and some really, really good kiting from Jyn Air here well, with, with the Rise and Victor. Yeah, I mean, and you combine that with uh, GBM's already safe play, it's unlikely that they're going to get a lot of kills on this mid lane. 
We'll see, though. Anything can happen. Again, Spinner just beat Janair, so I'm not going to make any predictions for this one, guys. I have no idea who's going to win it at this point. Indeed. Top, yep. I think Janair obviously should be the favorite, but it's like you're saying, it's difficult to call them that any longer after being defeated by a team that couldn't win a best of three in 15 previous attempts. Uh, that's right. Well, Janair versus Anarchy, game number one. Time to see who gets the early lead. Let's find out. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Janair Green Wings. Taking on Rebels Anarchy. Even their own fans won't call them Rebels Anarchy. Just gotta say Anarchy. It's one of the strangest things we've seen, I think, in, in Korean naming for teams or players is that no sponsor, no nothing. You just put a Rebels in front of your name. Decided to swap it. At least we're out of the phase where it's I am one and two, and KT uh, roster A and B. Ugh. SKT T1-1 and SKT T1-2. Yeah, well, they never improved. They just changed themselves to S and K. So, they didn't have enough branding in their name already, I guess Doha. not. Jeez. Yeah. There was, SK was only there once, so you had to add it a couple more times, you know? Yep, sure. You uh, triple brand, and then uh, <laughs> everybody knows. They really, really know what team it is. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard the bird is a word, but I'm not so sure now. Azir just going to coo at you. <laughs> Death pigeon. It's a dance off. Who does the BM ability first? That's a question. <laughs> Every day I'm shuffling. No. No, you. I, I've seen you many I, days, I am. I, and you're not <laughs> shuffling. That's a lie, though. I don't lie to the fans. You don't see me all the time. Perhaps I shuffle at home <laughs> when no one's watching. Shuffle to yourself. Well, you don't really shuffle to yourself. You can shuffle by yourself. Shuffling is not really an action that can be done to anyone. <laughs> oh, oh yes, it can. You think so? I can <laughs> shuffle to you. Absolutely. You're ag aggressive shuffling. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a lane swap, I guess. Song Yoon shuffles his way up the top here and traces. Brought Uncle Rise to deliver some freedom from embarrassment to Janair. <laughs> Liberating himself from his shame. That's right. He's actually a little gonna, bit of shock and awe. He's going to liberate uh, GBM from GBM's shame of missing all those cues. He's actually going to go back right now. Doesn't want to get in a sticky situation. And, you know, he didn't do any kind of jungle follow here. Yeah. So that may have been a bit overconfident. Going to check out his own jungle instead. Gank on to Mickey in the mid lane, but no damage there. Or no uh, kill there, at least. And not going to be doing a whole lot. So uh, could be, be a four-man collapse. They want to shut down the rise early, but Chaser's already here. So is... Sweet. It's almost Meganar time. Well, okay. Just letting you Raw. know. <laughs> uh, who needs blocks? Uh. I don't know why Mininar has blocks. Because he's wearing like pajamas, so it's it's like sort of childish, I guess. I see. Yeah. Did you have blocks when you were a kid? I don't know. I don't remember. Or did you just play with like? Oversized children's cufflinks or something. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> I, I thought my, so. My baby size tuxedo. Your parents gave you like a Fisher Price cufflinks and like giant leather bound books. <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> I thought you would be. See, I, I knew. I knew. <laughs> Worked out. Turned out well. Yeah. well. Will things work out for Trace in this top lane? He's still managed to stay up in CS to Ixu at least. Ixu attempted the dive. They thought maybe they could isolate Trace, but Trace has really good map sense, and he's one of the harder top laners to dive in Korea because he'll never really give you that opportunity. He backs off the turret so readily. You know, he's okay with denying himself some farm as long as it wastes the enemy jungler's time. And this frequently leads to Chaser getting a lead when it comes to CS or counter jungling. 
So basically, instead of Chaser going up to help Trace and help him get farm, he will instead let Trace lose farm and back off the turret and then instead go get farm for himself. Is that something that's really wise to do when your top laners arise, though? No. In this particular situation, it's not. In the Rumble Maokai games, I don't think it matters too much. You could play both of those top laners low economy. But it's just been a trend for Jyn Air to do this. So how long do you think Sweet's going to hang out in the top lane then and make sure that Trace does get some farm? Uh, forever, probably. Oh, OK. Forever. 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 Forever and ever. So Pilot going to be in the solo lane. He will, of course, be fine in this situation, as will Benar. So it's just about scaling for them. They need to continue the laning phase as long as they can. They can avoid some of the Lucian power spike in the mid game. That would be handy for them. But they have a Corky there just in case. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Sweet taking a lot of damage. It's a stun from Braum, but it looks like he'll be able to make it out. He's got that sustain, so might not be too bad. But here comes Lyra. They've got a ward, though, so no big surprise from this Elise coming in. He's going to get the ward at least. And I guess that ward should have been wearing a cardboard box, so Lyra wouldn't get an exclamation point over his head. I guess so. <laughs> That was not a solid snake ward <laughs> at all. It was definitely not a solid snake ward. You would have said, who's that box? It's just a box, and then walked away. <laughs> In the middle of the hallway where it wasn't before. Yep, that's right. It's like, ah. Battle Gear solid guards are really stupid. Well, the people just leave boxes everywhere. That's a problem. So it's smite onto Mickey, and a parting prey seeker. You would have think. You would have thought like liquid steak by now would be like, okay guys, new guard training program. Yeah. Remove all boxes. Yeah. If you see a box, shoot it. We need to clean up these hallways. <laughs> That's right. If you see a box, no questions. <laughs> Just unload a clip into it. Yeah, that's immediately. right. Terrifying every UPS man <laughs> in a 50 mile radius. Well, that's why you gotta clean up the boxes immediately. You yeah. Open them and then you collapse them. An uncollapsed box is potentially a, an enemy agent. That's really be, what he should be teaching everybody. It could be Salt Snake. Yeah, or at least break down all the boxes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just break them down immediately. Uh -huh. Liquid Snake and the rest of the bad guys are like really big on recycling now. <laughs> like, reduce the amount of dead guards because we're recycling all the boxes now. <laughs> yeah. Salt Snake has got to be pretty flexible to fit in that box like that. They're pretty big boxes. Well, what if they just, you can use boxes, but they just have to be smaller boxes, you know? Make them smaller and smaller until Salt Snake can't fit them. Or because you like to see this box, this multi-box shaped thing walking down the hall, you're like, no, Salt, that's not going to work this time, Salt Snake. Fight over the red buff. Yeah, Azir was back, but they're probably going to have to give this up. They reset it. Yeah, GBM helping out being annoying, but without Trace there, they can't really commit to that. Trace got his tier, TP back into the top lane, so early stacking starting on that item. A lot of CS for both top laners in a lane swap in only eight minutes. Why'd they name him Solid Snake anyway? Because he, he doesn't really like show up and like fight and be really obvious. He's just like, he just tries to be stealthy. They should have named him Sneaky Snake. <laughs> Sneaky Snake is a better name, I agree. That guy was asleep, and his friend put a piece of paper in his hat. That was awesome. <laughs> you know how there's that, the old World War II sta saying, loose lips sink ships? Yeah, of course. I think it should be, uncollapsed cardboard sends you overboard. Oh, ooh, that's really good. <laughs> they need to hire you to make, like, wall decal art for the next Metal Gear Solid game. In a world without boxes, how will Snake survive? He's been doing that for like 10 years, too. You'd think they'd learn. <laughs> That's right. And whenever their friends call him on the radio when he's dying, it's not the best idea. You're going to totally blow your friend's cover if you think he's dying and you start yelling his name over and over again. Snake! Just like be quiet. They're just emotional. It's already bad enough, you know? Yeah, but at least mute it. You can yell Snake, you just shouldn't yell it into the walkie talkie. <laughs> Like, who's this guy? Oh, it's Snake. Oh, let's see. We've never known, but now we know exactly who's behind this. We can retaliate appropriately. Thank you. Well, and it's also 
the fact that they don't even necessarily know he's dead. I mean, he just dies and doesn't respond. He could just be sneaking around saying nothing, and all or of a sudden his radio crackles to life, and or he's some just, idiot just starts yelling snake. He's just in the bathroom. He's just like uh, doing a number two, and nobody wants to talk on their phone when they're doing that. So suddenly he's just like, you know, trying to get business done, and his friends start yelling snake, and like the, the guard in the next cell is like, what? <laughs> Why is that cardboard box in the stall anyway? <laughs> this is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> oh well, I won't question that cardboard box. <laughs> well, it looks like we're seeing an Asher's build actually from Mickey here. Uh, it seems like uh, you can get a lot of attacks that way. Oh, Mickey trying to get away, makes it out with the E. Now, again, crucially, the E does not knock people up anymore. Hmm. This is different. So remember the W buffs that we were talking about earlier. So uh, he's actually maxing W second and still maxing Q first, but he's making up for the lost attack speed by building daggers. A different approach for sure. Of course, it is better ever since the AP itemization changes. Lyra may catch this rise underneath the. T oh no! Oh, Trace, so close. Trace just always walks back and hides in between his towers. You know? Always at the right time. GBM drops that ultimate, trying to go all in. There's a gravity field. Mickey pushing him back. That's a lot of damage. Mickey barely getting out, but he doesn't need to use any of his summoners. And GBM did pop his flash, or not his flash, his ghost, ghost. for that one. It's still worth it, though, because you're pushing him out of lane. You're, True. The ghost is on a much shorter cooldown. Not that the ultimate, but of course in the flash. And Mickey did get shoved back pretty aggressively right there. Lots of wards around mid, as we're used to seeing from Anarchy. They've totally taken over the top side jungle, and this means Chaser's gonna have to come and help. Yep, clearing out some wards on the way, but Trace continues to be pushed back and lose a bit of CS here and there. Still fairly up to uh, date with Ixu. Wow, sweet on a deep warding mission. And he's going to pay for it. Knocking so far back. Teleport coming in for Anarchy. They want to make a play here. GBM still no alt. You definitely should Just used it. Uh oh, GBM very, very low. Has to flash away. And now Pilot Song coming Yoon. in. Song Yoon got low, but Snowfire should be able to keep him safe. So, Sweet should not be going into that side of the jungle when he knows that Anarchy knows where his jungler is. Yeah. They have dangerous. some good wards, but that is a risky face check to make. And it's not even a decision for Anarchy there. They know they can just all in you like that, and they blow a bunch of flashes. You have your mid laner who loses flash as a result of that, and the summoner heal. They got some flashes out on the other side, but even so, not a wise decision. Ixu has his TP down now after TPing. Oh, it looks like he canceled it, actually. Hmm. All right. A little bit of a TP advantage for the moment, anyway. I shot by Pilot to chip out this tower and get this advantage in a tough lane. I mean, we talked about this earlier, but Rom Lucian is pretty, pretty good in, in the laning phase. And for Pilot and Sweet to do this well in a matchup that can be quite challenging on Snowflower. Oh, boy. It's a it's a game of dangerous warding, man. Oh, man. Is there to help out. barely too late. <laughs> TP. Yeah, they're going to try to go in on this one. Snowflower getting chased here. Lear getting chased as well. Snowflower going to get taken out. First blood picked up by Pilot. Which support takes more risks for wards? That, that is what this no, game is so no. far. The dangers of warding. Well, they got the mid lane turret, though. Managed to push that in on GBM, and they may get top here, too. So they two should. towers, not too bad for what they picked up. Don't think they're going to be able to actually respond with a turret or they're not going to be able to defend the turret in the bottom side with the sheen corky there who leaves the turret up for now yeah could they, have just autoed that yeah this uh this nasher's tooth does a lot to victors we saw this even before the api itemization changes in this matchup but victor without any mobility spells is going to take a lot of damage maybe an extra auto attack or two every time from mm. a, a trade with Azir you position your sand soldiers properly it's so much poke too when you're trying to vie for positioning around things like dragon yeah. and baron as well so this could be could be very very hard to deal with late game for Jin Air. yeah that Q damage too you can move it it allows you to max that Q and really move, continue moving the Sand Soldiers on top of the Victor. So that's another nice bonus. This build really looking like it's working out. 
for Mickey. Yeah. Getting some more wards down, and look at that attack speed already. Well, he's starting to get his W up, too. So. Yeah. Azir, certainly still a good champion. Maybe you can't use him in all of the crazy aggressive ways or initiations as you could previously. Coco is crying softly somewhere. Oh, I'm sure we'll still see amazing plays from Coco. I'm not worried, Doa. Maybe just a few less in the 1v1 in mid. Yeah. Yeah, as far as team fights go, you can still, you know, pull a Coco play and get behind the team and push them into your team with the Emperor's Divide or something like that. Or at least clean up team fights by yeah. using Sand Soldier bending. Yeah, and there the one knockup doesn't really matter as much. But it does reduce his presence in the 1v1, that's for sure. Or at least his kill pressure anyway. He's just stacking up his ultimate right there so he can clear the wave instantaneously. He's a bit behind when it comes to CS, but he's still doing assist. just fine, yeah. especially for the lane swap. A little bit late on the Rod of Ages, but again, was denied, so what do you expect? And we're just going to see some symmetrical pressure. Lyra is showing himself on the bottom side of the map score using this opportunity. And again, this is what I'm talking about. You know, Chaser's just going to counter jungle while Trace loses CS. You know, in two Trace's credit, though, is that he's managed to more or less keep up and not die. Yeah, yeah he's doing is, fine. It's easy to do one of those things. It's hard to do both on a champion like Ryze. You can keep up in CS and die, or you can <laughs> go way down in CS and stay alive. Usually yes. those are your choices with the Ryze, but Trace has managed to do both. Especially in the lane swap. That is very true in a lane swap situation. They yes. tried to dive him, but Janeiro was there with the play on the map. Make it work and turn their fortunes around, prevent that dive from going up in the first place. And since then, it's been some pretty smooth sailing for Trace. They're finally going to put him in that 1v1, but Ixu already with the Hex Drinker and the Cowl anticipating this move. Trace didn't have enough gold for the Rod of Ages on that back. He, it is really being delayed now. I wonder if he would have sold one of his Doran's rings if he would have been able to get it. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Hmm. One wonders. But he needs those Doran's ring. You have to have one for both hands. That's right. You know, one ring to rule them all, but if you have two rings, you can rule them all and then some. <laughs> Make sure nobody, you know, if one gets thrown into Mount Doom, there's not really a problem. You still got that other one. You got the one for like the elves and the dwarves and the men, but if you get another one, you can rule fish too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you can attack those elven boats as they That's try sweet. to leave that continent. <laughs> That's right, all the fish <laughs> slowly gnawing away at the hull. <laughs> Stupid elves. <laughs> That's right, fell right into my trap. <laughs> How dare they attempt to escape my sphere of influence. After three months at sea, a small leak will spring in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> And uh, that's actually how Frodo died. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the, it, that <laughs> part that part wasn't uh, talked about in the movies, but where he dies on the way, you know, to the uh, the Undying Lands, ironically. <laughs> 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 Everyone had a good laugh about that. You know? <laughs> it's like, who knew? Oh, well. A pilot. A pilot's doing a good job of just moving around the map and pushing, too, you know? Took out a couple turrets. Janeiro keeping up in that regard as well, and uh, one dragon, or one minute until the dragon. Only, only one dragon, that was true, I suppose. But it's only ever one on the map at any one time. Just true. release it from the dragon factory and send another one to roost. Unless there's a Shivana in the game, but sometimes there's two. Dragons usually last about a minute before they're killed, maybe less. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes we don't have dragons very long after the first one dies. Not quite the noble beast that... Uh, you think. Yeah, it's like dragons really isn't too complicated. No. Reports of the difficulty of slaying dragons has been greatly over-exaggerated. Yeah, pretty much. Seer puts up a disc of the sun. Wow. That disc of the sun. Did you know that briefly, so... Azir, obviously Egyptian inspired. And sure, the yeah. disc of the sun in ancient Egypt was called Aten. Yeah. Uh, and it was, for a very brief time, actually turned into a monotheistic religion with the worship of the disc of the sun before they went back to polytheism. Yeah, I heard about that. 
And uh, actually, Tutankhamen was the son of the pharaoh that did that. Oh. You know, King Tut himself. Because his first name was Tutankhamen, which was on, on which was the son yeah. disc. So interesting times if you like ancient Egyptian history and mythology. You know, you may be surprised to know that I actually did know that. Because my dad's <laughs> really nice. My dad can read hieroglyphics even. Nice. Yeah. Taught me a bit when I was a child. We should go explore the catacombs of Egypt together. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. Let me put on my headset. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we should, I suppose we should stay for this one at least. You didn't mean right now, I guess, huh? Okay. Oh, I was all excited for our grand adventure. <laughs> oh, Jenner with a good position over this dragon. I just really want to go grave robbing with you, Dora. <laughs> That's right. Well, no, it belongs in a museum. <laughs> can I just keep it for a little while, then we can give it back? Yeah, OK. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure nobody will mind. Certainly not those, those like ancient mummies and their curses and stuff. We'll just let you enter the tomb first, okay? Sure. Can we bring along Brendan Fraser? <laughs> no. Why not? Encino not Man was a great movie. Not even Hollywood wants to bring, bring along <laughs> Brendan Fraser so. anymore. <laughs> well, some directors ask that. Dragon being taken by Jhenner. Here comes the teleport coming down. They do get the dragon, but will they win the fight? Anarchy coming in. Culling Yu's not hitting a whole lot of people. Sweet with his ultimate in the middle of the fight. Pushes Mickey into the back. And Jhenner slowly cutting away. Trace coming in. As his ult, will he use it? Big knockup by Ixu, actually knocking its wall. And Mickey and the rest of Anarchy totally destroy Jin Air. Wow, double kill, triple kill for Lyra. And Chaser, the only one to make it out alive. That just happened. Yeah, you really don't want to fight Anarchy right now. You need more not. time to scale on your rise. You don't even have to go for that dragon if you're the Jin Air Green Wings, because your rise still scaling. Remember, he got his rod at 17, 18 minutes into this game, so he hasn't had a lot of time. His they, tier still tacking and stacking as well. They got the dragon. They could have just walked away. Yes, yes, they could have. Sweet went in. Uh, GBM didn't really hit very much with his death ray. Now everybody is clumped up. GBM doesn't really see what he wants, I guess, in terms of his chaos storm. But Ixu, I mean, what a telegraph flash nar too. They should have known. That, that flash was up for the NAR. Mickey did a really good job after getting punted out of coming back around to box people in for the flank. Yeah. He got headbutted out of the pit by Alistair. Yeah, I was going to say that Jinair's lucky that uh, all those kills went on to Lyra, but then I saw that Lyra bought the Aegis, and suddenly it's not seeming so, so lucky for Jinair. Yeah, that's a big item completion. It's still probably better than it could have been, but you look at Song Yoon. He was losing his lane. Now all of a sudden he has a Phantom Dancer and an Infinity Edge. And, and a lead in CS. And a lead in CS. Well, we'll see if Jhenner can turn this one around, but. I mean, they still have a stronger late game. But yeah, they do. They were basically choosing to fight in their power drop. And if you're Jhenner, just be happy you got that first dragon. Yeah. Don't, don't overplay your hand. It doesn't really matter. If you get dragon number two, and okay. That's a fast bear. Trace this, has no TP. Yeah, this may still be a little bit dangerous, so actually, no, never mind. Jinair has no idea it's happening. Oh, I see it now. Do they? Yeah, they do. Too late. Anarchy takes a 23 minute Baron, and Jinair, you know, again, that fight around dragon just showing that they're really struggling as a team with team fighting right now. When to go in, when to go out, what to do during the fight. And there is no excuse for losing a Baron like that. You have Rek'Sai. Yeah. You can see them when they're there with the Tremor Sense. You have Void Rush available. And you should be getting wards on those locations. And if you're just split pushing with your Rise, what do you say? That's just a terrible call. Good job by Anarchy. I think he's quite happy. He's like, yeah, things are going better now. He's like Spin who gave us all the secrets to defeat Jin Air. But uh, really, you don't need him because Jhenner is defeating him themselves. Mysterious. They had so much going for them in the early game, and then they yeah. just decided to play to their weaknesses, not respect the capability of this Lucian, who does a lot of damage right now, and the Azir to take out that Baron. And now they are busy playing defense in a tough situation. 
gonna have to abandon the mid lane apparently as Sata. Lyra finds an angle right there. GBM has to walk all the way back around. Yeah, not an unwinnable situation for Jyn Air, but certainly close to unwinnable at this point. Uh, it's getting really dicey. Yeah. I mean, they still have Rise. And they're not KT, so they can't come back when everyone else should lose. Yes, because they are part of everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, another defense on a tier two. They're committing all five members down here. We'll see if it can work. But already, 5k gold lead. This is exactly what Anarchy needed. Yeah, and looks like they're going to get another turret as well, too. Their composition is good at sieging as this is. This is not the type of team you want to get a lead in a silly team fight. Precisely. Kali can come through at any time, clear out the minion wave. He is here, can just pop that W onto the tower and continue to take it down. There we go, another turret down, so two tier twos. And the Baron for Anarchy, it's 25 minutes. Wow. So they will pull out to an extremely nice lead. Pilot's still struggling here. Doesn't even have his Blade of the Ruin King. In the meantime, Song Yu nearly done with his third core item. There it is, Blade's complete, but with the armor already on Nar, that may not be as useful when it comes to timings as he would like. And Deathcap now down on the Mickey, so a massive buy it's from just, Anarchy. It's just odd because, I mean, I can't stop thinking about that fight near Baron where they could have just walked away so easily, but Trace just kind of milled around in the fight too, didn't really use his ultimate to try to be intimidating or anything like that. It was just, that was one of the worst fights I think I've seen in All a right. long time. I mean, Jin Air has just been, they have fallen off so hard yeah. in the later parts of this season in the second round, Robin. Their team fighting is a mess these days, and it's just bad shot calling. You, part of having good shot calling is knowing, is do we need to fight this dragon? And the answer is definitively no. They did yeah. not need to fight it. Trace was far too weak. Trace was already behind where you would normally want a, a rise build to be at that stage. And you wonder if this is maybe the lack of uh, Che, the lack of Captain Jack, the, I, I wonder who's doing the shot calling here on Janair right now. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a mess recently, and now they have to give up the next dragon. Yep. No way to contest this, and maybe this is what they should have been doing earlier, concentrating the farm onto their late game carries and show back up. If, honestly, if you're running a composition like Jyn Air is with the top lane rise, it is a luxury to get that first dragon. That is, you're just so happy if you get that, because then you get more time tacked onto the enemy in, at the end of the game, even if your enemies get every single dragon thereafter. Yeah. Oh, Anarchy moving up. They may have caught Chaser here. Yeah, it's going to be dangerous. Chaser gets back in the lane. TP. Yep. Pilot running away. They're going to try to make something happen. Righteous Glory used, but they couldn't catch up to Pilot. I guess they did land the Q. Holy, that was a terrible TP from Ixu. I don't no know kidding. what he thought he was going to be able to follow up on oh, right there. Oh, Flash pulverize on the Snowflower. Jyn Air trying to turn this one around. The ult thrown back the other way by Braum, and Sweet's just going to get destroyed. Song Yun with a kill there. No follow up from Jyn Air. Right, what do you say to that? Uh, Sweet just went in, used his Flash to do that, accomplished nothing except for dying, and now their Anarchy once again, a man up. When it comes to sieging in this top side, I I don't even know what to say. There's just such a lack of synergy on Janair. These players just frankly look like they have stopped trusting each other in any capacity whatsoever. It really because is that, isn't it? There was yeah. no fault. How do you how does that even happen? Well and his team was there too. They were they were within oh, range to follow yes, up. Yes, looked at him. Yeah. I mean they were afraid of the glacial fisher to be sure, but Well, you can go around it. You can't that could have been the best engage of all time, but if you behave like Jyn Air did, I mean, I don't think it was a great engage, it was okay, but if you just sit there, there's, you got nothing. There's, yeah. You're never going to win that fight, obviously. Jyn Air really does seem to be kind of rolling over and dying here, and GBM is you know, slowly building up a good amount of damage on this victor, and there's still the outside possibility of a big team fight, but not if, not if, like you're saying, if they don't trust each other, and that really, really does look like what it is because 
Yeah, but 8K in the hole now, that's the problem is, I don't care if you have a rise, this is also post-nerf rise. It almost looks solo QS, you know, where you have someone trying to make a play, but just because there's no communication, nobody's ready to follow up. Maybe there's just no shot calling going on right now. Uh, to Anarchy's credit, they've done a great job warning this game. They've taken the right fights. We're criticizing Janair because they started the season so strong. Uh, they went up 4-0 and to start the season. They were Remember, they were tied with SK Telecom. Yeah. And they've been slowly sliding downwards. Anarchy doing a great job of baiting this Baron. Look at the vision. Five pink wards down, four Anarchy right now. And they've got everything nice and set up. Anarchy should be making a decisive call. They're looking significantly better. This is all just part of the grand get Nodge into Worlds conspiracy, man. You know, Jynair mysteriously <laughs> falls off. Elise is mysteriously buffed. Hmm. The truth is out there, man. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I don't think it is. I think we live in a world void of meaning. <laughs> wow. There is no truth. He's Nietzsche Christo. <laughs> Anarchy has a good position on this Baron right now. They're just going to start it. Yep. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Wow. Just keep on Mickey poking. doing so much poke with that Azir, too. They do need to fall back. They're waiting for the Rage Bar to get pulled. Now they're going to go for it. Good yeah. timing. That's right. Janir funneling through a choke with the Sand Soldier. They're going to take some damage. Sweet getting really poked up. There's a headbutt pulverize, but again, no follow-up at all from Jin Air. Ixu, another huge health throws. Jin Air, their Jin Air is going to get destroyed again. And Anarchy having no trouble at all. Mickey with a kill onto GBM. Ixu lives through that Chaos Storm. Pilot on the run. It looks like Sweet is trying to make plays, but right there, you can't make that kind of play through a choke. And even if even though that is true, Jinair also didn't even bother to try to follow up again. No, there was no follow up. Trace is going to try and hero mode this with a TP, but he's going to be too late. Good Maybe he get a kill, but Snowflower is still there. Lyra is too. Bye. Uh oh. Okay, he's okay. Yeah, he's just disengaging with the cocoon. Yep. Easily done. Anarchy playing a very clean game so far. Well, this is pretty, pretty disgusting from Jinair. For a team to fall so far, and yeah, that face pretty much says it all. <laughs> well, and especially because yeah. it's not like Anarchy. Anarchy has also been declining over the course yeah. of the season. It, it's not like we've seen Anarchy slowly powering up. No, they. I would argue they've also gotten worse. Perhaps individually better on certain levels, but as a team, their coordination has gone down. Well, this game is... They're doing a good job of snowballing, you yeah. have to say. And Jin is really giving them a lot, a lot of opportunities where you don't really need high-level synergy to be able to pull off these kinds of fights. Yep, and Ix has been there. Great flash ults this game. Yep. Really nicely done. Hmm. Now Jin is 11,000 gold down at 32 minutes. Two Barons behind. Yep. Dragon about to come up in 20 seconds or so. Anarchy should have no trouble at all taking that. They don't even need to go for it right away. They can just keep pushing. Oh, push, push up. Baron buff. Push up. Siege the mid lane. Use your compositional strengths. Yep. And Mickey playing a, a, a style we don't see from him very often. Very positional. Very just uh, siege oriented. Not making the big flashy plays, but still making a big difference in terms of the poke he can put out with these sand soldiers. Not bad. Well, you know, for Jin Air's playoff hopes, they were already very low. Oh, geez, look at this. I feel like Trace could have taken him if he would have stuck around. But no, Megan no. R coming up, so yeah. I guess not. If he tried to get in there, yeah, he Megan R, R. Yeah. that would have been a bit, bit hairy, I think. Yeah. Wow. If Jin Air loses this game, basically they can't make the playoffs. They had to win 2-0 tonight. That was pretty much you know, with the way, requirements. The way they've been playing, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, I, I, you, you can't really honestly say that Jin Air deserved to go to the playoffs compared to the other teams when we think about how they've been playing recently. Yeah. They're having a hard time cracking this base, though, surprisingly. Hmm. Ixu has his TP up. Switch their focus back into the top side. Only a small amount of inhibitor damage coming through. Yeah, they're surviving through this Baron pretty well, but what's going to happen after that? That's the question. They're going to just 
it's very small amounts of damage by rotating constantly between the top and the mid. It's working, but that Baron buff, not going to have too much longer on it. They're just going to have to pull back and, nope, nope, they're going to make one final push. No more Baron. Yeah, they're just going to turn around and go for the Dragon, I guess. Good decision. Can Jin Air chase him, though? And do something about this. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they could, but it might be the end of the game if they make that decision. Well, Sangyun has been having a pretty good game on uh, discount banana costume cushion. Budget banana. Budget banana. Discount Sounds so, budget. Like, so much better is budget banana. All right. Discount banana sounds a little bit more insulting, I <laughs> Budget banana, that's fine, too. Oh. Well, pretty sure this is going to be the end of Janair here, another game where they make some very poor decisions and very poor team fights. Yeah. And you can say, what is Sweet doing in this game in terms of his engages, but frankly, this is a massive team problem. There's some communication issue that's happening right there. I mean, Sweet's made multiple engages that could have been followed up on. Yeah, I'm not sure they were great engages, but they were certainly... Good enough. I, the one through the choke, choke was really bad. Yeah, but the one in the top lane was certainly... It was all right. ...usable. Yeah. But I would like to see Che come back in. Captain Jack as well, too. They... Najin really does seem to need some sort of veteran presence in this game. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm, I am surprised that after this Benu loss, they didn't try some different members out in their roster. Well, I mean, after a loss like that, things can either get better in the team house or they can get a lot worse. And uh, if this game is in any indication, it looks like things did not go well. Yeah. Well, the question is, are we going to see another wait for the Baron? These towers are chipped a little bit, but they've had a small amount of time to heal back up. That's the question, too, is now how, how efficiently can Anarchy close? Because it's not like they've been the greatest team at uh, finishing no. games like this, too. Uh, they've been more decisive this time. They've done a good job of just slowly increasing their gold lead and not giving up any pressure. Sure. At some point, they need to try to crack this pace, though. Or they need to actually do it. I guess they've been trying for the last 10 minutes or so. Here we go. Sweet. An opportunity for a play there. The slow death of the inhibitor turret. I know, this is just agonizing, man. Lyra's going to auto attack, though. That's right. Time for the Elise to burst down the turret with those sick auto attacks. They really should just crack the base before going to the Baron. They, they fall back again. It is giving Janair, I think, too much of a fighting opportunity. Yeah. Well, Janair is just constantly farming while this is all going on, too. And certainly not getting weaker by Anarchy doing this. And Janair does have a really strong late game team comp, too. Yeah, and, and they can't really dive this, right? Janair, yeah. if they get dull, has so much damage from Victor and Rise underneath those towers that it becomes a very dangerous proposition. Well, Lyra manages to uh, grab the red buff on his way out. Nikki goes back for a buy. I think he picked up his Void Staff there, if I, if I saw that right. I think he got his Echo, actually. Oh, okay, but. yeah. Could have been that. I wasn't sure if it was a Void Staff or the Echo. Well, GPM well, slowly working his way up to a Zonia's Hourglass, but I'm not sure he's going to have that done by the time this game ends. Clearing out the waves right now, looks like Anarchy simply wants to force another fight around the Baron with the insane gold lead that they have currently. Wow, they're just going to start the Baron. <laughs> just two-man that. They're going to get spotted, but how desperate is Jin Air going to be here? They should be pretty desperate. Coming in, there we go, Sweet for the engage. Misses that Pulverize, though. And now Anarchy's going to try to turn it around. Sweet, despite the ultimate, is taking so much damage. Wow, he lives through a full culling, but not through Song Yun's burst afterwards. Exhausted the top line, and there comes the Emperor's Divide. Another huge ult from Ixu. The double kill comes in for Song Yun, and another easy team fight win 
for Anarchy. Yeah, and Ixu is just going to be able to chase him down with the help of Lyra. There's the Flash Cocoon on the GBM. Yep, Mickey with another kill. Oh, gives his life the GBM, but there's a near perfect ace. Mickey probably didn't need to be that aggressive. Well, that is probably going to be the end of this game. This tower is so low already due yeah. to the repeated siege attempts by Anarchy. Well, 50 second death timers, this is definitely the end of the game. They've got the minion wave, they've got four members of their team remaining. It's gonna be a pretty easy win here for Anarchy at 39 minutes, man. I don't know what's wrong with Jin Air, but whatever it is, it is bad. Well, props to Anarchy, though. They did a good job cleaning up this game. They're going to take home at least a win in game one of this series. And Sweet dies again. I mean, the one <laughs> engage that his team actually followed up on, he missed his pulverize. He, yep. flash, he flashed in with the Righteous Glory, but couldn't pull off the actual pull. And so there wasn't that initial CC. Man, He's, that was... It's very clean by was... Anarchy, actually. It was, it was. Well played by them. Well played indeed. Definitely knew how to use it. Particularly Ixu. I think Ixu had those two big ults that really turned the game on its head. You know, and if you look at Jyn Air right now, they don't look mad, they don't, they don't look anything. They just look like they're resigned to their fate here, and that's not what you want to look like after the first game in a best on the line as we go into picks and bans for game number two between Anarchy and Jyn Air. Yeah, and because of the way the format works, if they don't make playoffs, which even now they're very unlikely to do after uh, losing that first game, and the fact that they have to play Coup in this condition in two days' time. Yeah. But maybe if they're lucky, they find themselves seated at the bottom of the world's qualifier bracket, but I don't think, I just don't think that your team is in a mental condition to actually win that, that gauntlet. I, <laughs> You look at their play and the fact that these guys don't even look like they trust each other in some of these team fights any longer and should be a quick ticket out of that bracket. Yep. Wow, really trying to ban out Che here. Interesting. And Italy banned once again against Chaser. So what will the first pick here? I Maybe think Elise would be a good choice. They picked Elise and Braum on the red side in the first round of the draft. Uh, lots of junglers open, though, so maybe you don't go for that route. You could theoretically take Victor here. We saw that a lot in our first series of the evening. True. Elise is so strong there right now. Yep, they will. Go ahead and lock it in. I'm impressed that Mickey had such a good game on his year. That's not a champion that we think about. He's played Victor, but playing a really... <laughs> A, a control mage like that is a little bit different for him. He did go in and die when he didn't need to that one fight. So he's yeah, still got a bit of that overaggression. But he played around the chokes really well. And we think about Mickey as a player who likes to go all in. The fact that he showed a lot more patience in some of these team fights was nice to see. Well, Trace may decide to take the Gnar away from Ixu. I mean, Ixu had some great Gnar plays, but I feel like those great Gnar plays were more because of Jyn Air's poor positioning than any spectacular thing that Ixu did. And a lack of respect for what Gnar could do yeah. and whether the flash was up and if he was in Mega Gnar or about to be, I agree. I think there are ways to play around Gnar. And Trace has played a decent amount of Gnar this season, too, so it's not just a takeaway. It is one of his champions as well. I'm going to lock that one in, and looks like they're going to take the Gragas as well. Yeah, Gragas, a very stable pick for Jyn Air. I'm a bit surprised they didn't take the Rek'Sai, considering that they almost always prioritize Rek'Sai above the Gragas. But apparently have a different composition in mind. I do wonder if this means that Pilot will play Vade. Wow, Shen. So mixing it up, Ixu going on to Shen. The Lucian will be locked in immediately for Song Yun. Song Yun had a great game on Lucian uh, in game one, so that's not too surprising. Seemed to really do well as uh, clean up and as Siege. Remember the Twisted Fate is up this game, it's unlike true. last time. And that is, of course, a GBM special right now. They like to play with the TF, with the TP. And so they're not going to show anything right here. I guess so. Going to save that mid pick until last. Yeah, it does make sense. I'm sure they want to take TF if they can get it. So the Thresh locked in for Che. And Quirky likely for Pilot. I don't think you want to pick that vein right now if you don't have more information. What mid lane 
Is Mickey going to blind pick? I guess TF would still be okay. Victor, Victor is here. You would think that would be what he would take blind. Probably not Zed. Even though it is up, it's not too safe to take in this position. That's actually a great point. This is the first time in a while for Anarchy that Zed has been available to pick. I'd love to see him play it. Oh boy. Oh, we will. <laughs> Nice. I, this usually works out very well for Anarchy. So Maokai, okay. uh, we is... have seen Mickey just absolutely go off, and it will be. It's shunt support, isn't it? Yes, it is. This yeah. Is the first time we've seen it in Korea. Oh, somewhere Saint Vicious is clapping and dancing with glee. I'm sure that exact thing is happening. It could be a Maokai support too, but it's probably going to be the shunt support. Yeah, almost certainly going to be shunt support, yeah. given what we've already seen. So support. Got good. That sick cocoon CZ. This is an excellent pick composition. Yeah. Cocoon, twisted advance, the taunt. You have all the tools you need to pick somebody off from Janair. Now, usually Janair likes to early pick the victor for GBM, but they've, it's fallen way down the draft in this game. And they're thinking about whether they can play it into the Z or not. Does Janair have an answer to Mickey Zed? Because they didn't ban it. They thought the Azir was a bigger threat. I'm not so sure I agree with that. Mickey Zed is really scary. We've seen him win games on it after the ultimate nerfs. It hasn't been that big of a deal for them. Will be the victor locked in? Yes, it will. So GBM's victor versus Mickey's Zed. And it's, it's risky. I mean, uh, Janair has a good composition, but with the way they've been playing, Anarchy up a game, and then you give Mickey his best champion. Is this really the wisest thing to do? The team you just lost to, you give their best player his best champion? Yeah, I don't know, and it's really, it's Gen support, I don't, I don't normally like it very much, but in this situation, where you're going to have Zed split pushing, and you can add a shield to him in any situation, because you're going to be with your AD carry most of the time, to make those cross map plays, it gives you that extra global tool. So basically, in order to stop Mickey, they are always going to have to send two more people. They would have to send three people down there to deal with him because Maokai and Shen can be there in an instant to help Zed in a skirmish. So I like this composition from Anarchy. It's a creative use of the Shen support to aid in Zed split pushing. And there's nobody who can answer the Zed. Uh, if he starts getting ahead, he's going to absolutely take over this game. And there's so many ways for him to get ahead. Uh, Lyric and Gank after Shen hits six, it's going to be good. Uh, we'll see if Anarchy can get the 2-0 and knock Jin Air out of any competitive contention for the rest of the year. Let's find out. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Rebels Anarchy versus the Jin Air Green Wings. And it's surprising to see it come down to this after a pretty decent year for Jin Air overall. Losing to Spenu and now on the verge of being 2 0 by Anarchy. And again, like we mentioned, if that happens, Jin Air is pretty much done for the year. Yeah, I, the, barring some sort of insane miracle yeah. gauntlet run for the World Championship, uh, they will pretty much be out of contention for playoffs. Uh, and therefore not getting that many circuit points, therefore placing themselves very low on a potential ladder for a world's spot. Yep. So Deport's coming in from Anarchy this game. They do get the ring down, and they have Shen there, so Nar will be Recalling, looks like they really want this 2v2. They can snag it. It's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how this Shen support does in the, the 2v2. Now they see that Pilot and Che are heading down to the bottom side. Oh look, they're actually not going for it. So they know that Pilot, no, they still see them on the ward. They're trying to guess where they're going. Uh, sh they got the necessary information about where the dual lane is going to be, so Lucian and Shen, looks like they're going to be heading down to the bottom side. So they actually are lane swapping into Corky and Thresh. Okay. Interesting, intentionally. 
I don't know too much about Shen Support's laning phase. So I don't know what the good matchups are. I mean, you can certainly harass quite a bit with your Q because there's no uh -oh. mana involved. Oh, Shane, a lot of trouble. Okay. There's a play they were waiting for, and there's the exhaust. This is almost certainly going to be first blood. Oh, it will be with the flash. Maybe Where I spoke too soon. Three, two, one. Oh. And Flash Cocoon, Chain a lot of trouble. Gonna go down, yes he will. First blood goes to Snowflower and his Shen support. That is not a good start. They're just lucky it went to the support. Wow, well, there or was- are they this time? There was a lot of crowd control coming in. Snowflower, of course, because he's playing support Shen, can't afford to take that E right at level one. Yeah. And they tried to disrupt the jungling, but Shen was still there, and I really don't think they were expecting. It was weird for Shen to be there, number one, because Lucian was walking all the way down to the bottom side, but that ward in the mid lane was really the reason behind that, because as soon as they saw the dual lane going up top, they knew that Lucian could just walk down into the 1v1, which meant that Snowflower could be there at the blue buff with the rest of the team. And this lets Mickey push like crazy in the mid lane as well, too, and perhaps deny a little bit of CS to GBM as he has to farm under turret. It's, it's a rough situation, for sure, and not definitely not the start you were hoping for, but oh, that yeah. was a tricky play by Anarchy based off of that really nice ward smack dab in the middle of mid lane. Have we mentioned that uh, Mickey Zed has a 100% win rate? That's why it's banned against him all the time? Yeah, it's banned against him almost every game. I, I'm a bit surprised that you would think that banning is a zero was a better plan. We'll see if it works out. Jin Air gonna have to get a lot of armor this game to make it viable. And we saw GVM get a little bit cocky in his build up against that mid Jarvan and Spenu. Yeah. I suppose the nice thing about Shen support too is that he could set up minions for the ADC to get a little bit of healing off of as well too. So you've got that kind of unique way to sustain in lane and with the shield you can just in a normal 2v2 I would imagine you could probably just walk up and trade with the Q pretty consistently. Yeah you, you can I would think. Let's see how he handles it so far. Uh, the Maokai is definitely suffering a little bit in this laning phase considering that Trace has had a 1v1 the entire time with no sort of action going on. He is the big benefactor to the First Blood going over to Anarchy. That is true. So there is a bit of a silver lining to that play in that he did get just a ton of free time alone farming. And he's gotten pretty much all the CS because he has that range. Meanwhile, Song Yoon and Pilot nearly even because Pilot was in lane when those shenanigans in the jungle were going down. He picked up all that farm. That is making the gold lead slightly less than it would be otherwise. Only about two, three hundred right now. Yeah, Mickey, even CS against GBM as well. And the poke from GBM is going to start to get scarier and scarier compared to what this Zed can put out. I'm very curious how Mickey is going to play this because if he death, death marks in, he can't get out right out anymore. So putting a gravity field on the feet of Victor should do a lot of work in that regard. Yeah. The uh, timing would have to be really fast for GBM, though, because it is only one second that you need to wait before you can get out. Yeah, but you also need to do damage before the gravity field goes in. So it's a, it'll be an interesting matchup. Also, GBM took exhaust, so he's not going to be as concerned. Interestingly, Che taking Ignite here, so only one exhaust to deal with the Zed. That could have some major ramifications in the late game. Yeah. A little bit of damage on Trace from Song Yoon, and he continues to be aggressive in this bottom lane. Yeah, just wants to push forward right now, probably looking for a recall timing somewhat, maybe not quite yet. Doesn't have that BF sword, but we start considering that at the very least. Snowflower got some good wards into the enemy jungle. Chaser and Che looking to keep Ixu down right now. They have carved out a pretty nice CS lead for Trace in a matchup that he will win when he goes back to that lane once he picks up a Hex Drinker. Yeah, very true. Snowflower maneuvering his way down to the bot lane. Help out Song Yoon now. Yep, he's just been 
very carefully warding around that dragon. No, so they can keep playing aggressively, try to deny as much CS as they can straight into the turret. Well, with that first blood giving him that early sight zone, he's going to be able to get a lot of nice warding in. And Anarchy has done a pretty good job with vision all season long, even if they haven't been able to use it necessarily to yeah. win games. They definitely put down a lot of wards. They sometimes ignore the information or don't know how to play around the information that they receive because they are a less veteran team. But, but you'd rather overward and not use it than underward and not have the ability yes. to even try. Yeah, because that, you can't fix problems if you don't know, if your players don't have the information to make decisions. Exactly. Much easier to overward and then fix things from there. They do see Snowflower, but he's just creeping in for a bit of warding. Once again, he's got Lyra there to back him up, but the Wolf Spirit will find him in the enemy jungle. They're not really going to be able to contest this blue buff like they might have hoped. And we see a lane swap of the AD carry into the top lane after the BF sword is picked up. Nope. Actually, Sangyum thinks better of it. They oh. change their lane assignment right there. After the blue buff is taken, Mickey is you know, on a killing mission. Remember, Corky has no items right now. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get back just in time here. Yeah, they read that well. But a red buff to steal can come through. It looks like they'll get it. So as Lucian comes back to the lane, the first shot, Corky hadn't gone back yet. And they're not really punished for it. Instead, they get a red buff because Corky has no items. So they are free to make a play into the top side jungle. Really good call there from Anarchy using the staggering of the AD carry recall timings to create an advantage for themselves. Yeah. Trace actually not going for a Hex Drinker. Straight up tank instead. Just think he's going to be harassing that much. Maybe he just wants to get that cowl so he can get armor faster in case he has to split push against Mickey. That might be it. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. Song Yun could be in a little bit of trouble here. They don't see Chaser and Che coming down. See it now. So far is right there. There's a flash body slam. Nice cast. Sonya taking a lot of damage. Pilot can oh. help Che pick up the kill. Oh boy. That ignite yep. taking it at the last second. They tried to give it over to him. Didn't actually he, work out. Actually, Che just straight up stole that. Because that ignite was popped in the very last second as well, too. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> right, look at the cooldown, man. He definitely stole that kill. I approve, but it's not a good idea. <laughs> Joel approves of your bad decisions. Yeah. Don't do as I say, do as you do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> this saying doesn't go like that. Doesn't go like that at all. No. Nice try, though. It was do a good, as I don't say, don't do as I do. It was a good platitudinal go. attempt, Toa. <laughs> oh, well. I think my second one worked out. Yeah, it did. It was shaky. It did. It worked out. It was the only way you could say it. I give it a C. C, we're doing letter <laughs> grades now for this. 75% of a up of platitude. There you go. Yes, you do see. I gave you one. I grab her hard. <laughs> so Mickey's starting to really get poked in. It is going to be really hard for Mickey to do anything to GBM here. You would imagine. Unless Lear is able to make some sort of pick, but he hasn't been able to get in there and do that yet. They need to get the Zed rolling, though. It's incredibly important, and why we don't see more Zed is because that split push has to be strong and forceful to get Zed relevant in team fights. Otherwise, he will just get shut down upon entrance, especially with so much disruption coming in from Jin Air. They have a lot of ways to tie up the Zed with knockups, in particular, from Thresh and Gragas. So he has to be very careful. And he needs to start putting on that 1v1 threat and taking down turrets because you pretty much have to get a lead. Otherwise, if you're even with Zed in a team fight, he just isn't designed for that. Yeah. And teams can teams can play around team fighting these days. Jinair got a very early first dragon. They can continue to group on that objective. So it is looking pretty decent for Jinair in this one, at least early on. Sure, Anarchy has an advantage, but it's not substantial in the least. And you can see, though, how Anarchy, after that first game, decided to go for something a little bit riskier in the mid lane, too, because 
It's not like Jin Air was making wide decisions or wise decisions as far as like when to fight last game. Yeah, absolutely true. And Zed, if he can find the target on his own, and they have a great pick composition again that Illy Zed is very strong together, really good synergy. They have a Maokai. Zed can roam anywhere on the map and get some hard CC to pop a death mark. That's right. Pop a death mark? So we're, we're going to call Zed now? Pop a death mark. Here pop comes, his ult. Here comes Pop a death. I know, it just sounds like a name, you know? Ah. Pop a death mark. Pop a death mark. That should be, for your should be a Zed skin. Yes. Oh, there's a death mark. Pop a death mark onto GBM. He's going to be okay, though. That was actually an escape death mark. I guess so. He saw the Thresh coming down and wanted to get to the other side of GBM. And since Zed, since they changed his ultimate, he now Again. spawns behind the target. Yep. I should say spawns. I should appear <laughs> out of the shadows spawns. after he makes three more Zeds. Many Zeds. To make some, you know, it's, it's good to have some extra Zeds lying around in case the first one breaks. And they are fragile. Does Zed have problems with Zeds breaking? I think so. Keep some clones of himself around just in case. I would. You would? Is that what you do? Yeah. Just in case, you know. <laughs> Got a couple. Do they have your memories, though? Well, would I, if you... <laughs> If you had to send one to the studio, would it know how to cast? Maybe. I may not even be the first Doa. I'm not sure. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, I don't really care. I, I don't really care either, man. I mean, it's like, I'm okay with it. You know, some clones would be bothered by something like that, but I don't know. I just think I have a better than the last guy. And Janair may decide to dive this turret here. Oh, they will. Sangyun pushed against the wall with that explosive cast. Snowflower forced to flash away, but... Kind of a sloppy dive by Janair. He was trying to flash in front of a possible death sentence, but Helps too. didn't come through. Mickey now. Here comes the death sentence. Here it comes. Oh. The death mark. They didn't want to go for it. Everyone from Janair playing conservatively, backing off that bottom side in time that Mickey doesn't have that opportunity to make a play. And one thing Janair has been doing well this game is not giving them an opportunity actually make a play in this game with the Zed, play conservatively. They picked up a kill earlier, despite all of that, Jay. Pretty much. But I think it's smart for them not to overcommit at the moment. Trace is getting work done onto the top turret. Doing well in that matchup, starting to create a CS lead. Has a giant spell right now. It's like he will be going into Randuin's as a second item. Gets the flat HP first because it's more useful in lane against the Maokai. And then will transition to some armor that has a pink ward just to protect himself. Oop. There we go. Yeah. I mean, Jin Air's kind of given, given themselves a composition where they don't really necessarily need to make plays. They just have to wait for the enemy team to try to make plays and fail. Yes, or wait for the late game as long as Zed yeah. doesn't get ahead. Maybe Zed gets a, a turret or two, but you don't really care about that. If you can't create a huge gold lead, like 6, 7K, you're not going to be too worried. But that said, there's the, the dark side to this is that is true if you know how to team fight against a Zed. Hmm. And Jin Air has shown some pretty poor team fighting recently, so there's always that possibility that Mickey just sneaks into the back line and kills GBM for free. In which case, things change dramatically. Well, he'll certainly be trying. Oh, Snowflower is going to find Chaser there. That's the ward. Yeah, they have a pink ward in that brush. GBM coming oh down. Oh boy, here's the dive. It's going to be a four man dive in bot lane. Song in a little bit of trouble. Jay coming in as well, too. There's a kill for GBM. They're going to go on to Ixu as well, too. And that should be an easy kill to pick up. That's a double now for GBM. That is exactly what Jin Air needed. They're going to lose their mid lane turret for it, though. And that is a relatively large price to pay when you consider that now GBM is going to have to overextend against a Zed and an Elise. But they get everybody down into the bottom side. And Anarchy simply doesn't react in time. Lyra's on the top side of the map, so a good dive from Jin Air. They're, they're going to get their second dragon, yep, too. They're going to chain it right into a dragon. They're going to get the bot lane turret. 
also. So definitely a favorable trade there. Hands down for Jin Air. They make the play, they make the commitment, and they will get a very slight gold lead out of that. But more importantly, a second Dragon at 320 minutes. Huge for them. They could have a Dragon number five as early as 35 minutes now. That is big. And still no big items for uh, Mickey this game. He's been, uh, he started with some sustain to deal with the poke and the Biltwater Cutlass, and he's now trying to get the necessary armor penetration that he can actually one-shot people, but Trace a little bit ahead, has the Warden's Mail now, is in a good position. GBM closing in on his own, his Hourglass, so Mickey is running out of targets, and he is running out of time in this game. Yeah, I'm gonna start the split push now, and we'll see what Jin Air has in response for this. I'm just not sure Anarchy is coordinated on the map to make this composition work. It's a good comp, I think, if you are a very good split pushing team. Oh. We're gonna try and set up the pick now. Snowflower just waiting in the fog of war. GBM is here. No, they're gonna have to dive this. They yeah. have to go for it. That's right, and they will not yet. Yep, there we go. Oh, oh it's hard. This is exhaust comes down into GBM. Can they finish him off? Lyra coming in as well, too. GBM still gets killed off by Mickey. So messy, but it worked. Uh, they're gonna oh. go after Che. Yeah, and Che should be easy pickings. That's another kill for Mickey now on that Zed, and they're going to get the turret. So really, worst case scenario for Jin Air there. They lost the turret, and they gave two kills to this Zed. That is the opposite of what you needed to have happen. I don't think GBM's exhaust was up for the start of that fight. It is now, but yeah. maybe we can check that again once the replay hits. Otherwise, that was a misplay from him but Mickey making it work, and it was started out as a pretty ugly dive. Both Lyra and Snowflower missed their crowd control, but there's so much damage coming in from this Zed, and he is a huge mid-game threat that they're able to take the turret, they're able to get the kills onto the Zed. Now, that doesn't really do much for them when it comes to a global gold lead, but now Zed has even more split-pushing pressure. And he picked up the last Whisper first. Yep. What do you think about that? Well, wants to burn through the armor. He needs to be able to deal with Nar, if possible. You can see him walking up here. He will be seen by a ward as he comes in, but they want the turret, and it's just a roaming gang squad now from yep. Snowflower and Lyra and Mickey. Push the wave up, put the pressure down on the turret. This is what they have to do. That's enough to scare Trace away for the most part. And that's going to be another turret quick succession. Oh, wow, Righteous Glory Pop just to scare Trace away, I guess. Thought maybe they had a play, but nope. That is a turret lead now for Anarchy. Yeah, but Jin Air doing the exact right thing. Oh, yeah. Don't fight them. If they're going to commit four people without a TP into the top lane, just go ahead, take the last turret. You see GBM split pushing, and Pilot is going to smoothly transition into the bottom side of the map. There's pigs on Baron. They're, they're, is Anarchy going to go for a 20 minute Baron uh, here? They may. Ixu should have teleport very, very soon. They're thinking about going they're gonna for do it. it. I think they're going to do it. Oh, there's I, a ward there, though, yeah. There is a ward there, but there's so many people in bottom. Man, they just lost two turrets for one due Ugh. to their own indecision. They were pinging around that. Now oh, Trace. Death mark on the Trace. Let's see if he can take out this Gnar with all that armor. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, just goes back to his original shadow, so not a great use of death mark. Maybe he can get some slip pushing done, but Jin Air shot calling. Looking much better this game. They're responding appropriately to this threat. They're not getting frazzled. They're, they're simply not fighting in dumb situations. They're simply just pushing the map and punishing the commitment of anarchy of too many people to one side. Oh, oh nice. Lyra. Flash body slam onto Lyra. Gets caught completely, and there's a kill for Pilot. Oh, no, it wasn't a flash body slam, Doha. That was Lyra wasn't missing it? his flash over the wall. Oh, you're right. He tried to get over. That's true. It happened like right as he yeah. came in, so I thought it was a, yeah. Well, that's even worse for Lyra. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. This is, like, it looks like a completely different Jin Air team than we saw in game number one. I mean, these guys are methodical. They're safe. The only thing that's changed is Che in there for support. So you do have to wonder how much confidence they have in Sweet and how much shot calling Che is able to bring to the table. Yeah, they're, they're definitely making significantly better decisions. Now, it is against a Zed. There's a reason why Zed isn't in the meta, even if you are super good on Zed like Mickey is. And this is it. It's just, it's too easy for other teams to answer your split pushing. Right. And it has a very brief timing window, and Zed is going to have issues when it comes to pushing 
by himself, especially since he has a lens instead of a upgraded ward totem to keep eyes on whether they're collapsing on him or not. Now, it does mean less in this game because there's a Shen support. A Shen support that has been found by Nar and will be poked down viciously. The vicious poking of a Nar. That's right. So what does Anarchy do here? It's not a lot. Dragon up in 45, and Jin Air in a great spot to take their third in a row. Yeah, this is a powerful early snowball for Jin Air. The fact that they can be at 35 minutes at five Dragon stacks is absolutely perfect for them. This e limiting this Zed even more. GBM fearlessly coming down with his exhaust into that bottom lane. They do have a ward inside the tri brush. And GBM's got that Zonia's now, so he has much less to fear the, about this Zed than he, uh, he, he used has to. Zonia's. Perfectly fine. Yep. He's not too shabby when it comes to burst of his own. Just doesn't have that ignite. He may have to find a different target, or will take multiple people for Zed to get that kill. Well, Anarchy trying to get some wards up around Baron, but Jinair grouped up. Anarchy basically saying, "All right, if you want Dragon, we're going to take Baron," but they don't know if they're going to be able to kill it quite fast enough. Yeah, they, they no blade can't. on Zed yet, so I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, they they just they just can't, more than likely. So Jinair to take their third dragon. No one here to contest it. They see Zed in the bottom side that will alleviate any concerns from the Jinair Green Wings. Yeah, pretty much. And that is the easy dragon for Jinair, just two manning it with pilot and chaser. If you just farm in the Krugs. Crying with the Krugs. Crying with the Krugs, well, that's all he can do at this stage. He's going to take some pretty big heroics from Mickey to find some targets. He can get a kill or two, and they can skirmish well. Maybe, just maybe, they can take a Baron and get back into this game. But taking the Baron is the really hard team, because the really hard thing, because when we talk about split pushing, there's nothing that benefits more from a Baron than a split pushing team, but split pushing teams are frequently not great at team fighting, so to even get that Baron in the first place is a complicated question. I don't think that Anarchy has the answers to said question either. It doesn't look like it, not this game anyway. Now, the I mean, Jyn Air, this is looking more like the Jyn Air from earlier in the season, where you just get a lead, and then very, very, very slowly end the game. Yeah, but maybe you get to six items or 70-second death timers, and you die, and then you lose. That's also the other <laughs> yeah. aspect of Jyn Air. That does happen, too. Maybe you don't close it out quickly enough. That's really their biggest weakness. Trace now with plenty of armor to cut off the split pushing. Anarchy trying to clear out vision, but they have to get out of there, afraid of being isolated. Ooh, Chaser, Ooh. nice catch. Yeah. Takes a bit of damage. He's definitely thinking about using that explosive cask right there. I think he was too, yeah. I mean, you can catch, like, Snowflower, perhaps. Good Cocoon will stall that out. Mickey goes back again, this time to complete his Blade of the Ruined King. He's probably not going to hit a bigger power spike than the one he is currently enjoying. These three is items. he enjoying it really, though? Well, well, we are about to find out because he hasn't had it before. Thank you very much. So we will oh, see welcome. how much Mickey enjoys his three item power spike onto Zed. The spike of power has begun. And he's going to celebrate by split pushing. No, mid lane, no split pushing. <laughs> by turning around in a circle in That's his right. own jungle before deciding to split push with probably inadequate wards. Yeah, well, he's got one, which is not going to cover where he's going to be in like 10 seconds. So yeah, it's pretty inadequate. And they're also really scared about Baron because when you split push bottom with his Zed, I don't understand why they don't send Ixu bottom and have him split top. So at least he's by the Baron in case something happens. It would make a lot more sense. Mickey coming up now anyway. Wow, they caught Lyra. Lyra with the repel. Gonna come down, gonna flash away, and he is not going to quite make it. They're gonna catch him now, and Jyn Air 
in a good position to go for this Baron. With the jungler down, you can bait this all day, or at least until he at least comes back. Yeah, 4v5 with the Zed. That's not going to be a fight you're going to win. You just have no tanks except for Ixu anymore. And he's not even that tanky when you consider that he has no armor right now. So I think, think Jhenair should just go for this Baron. It's not actually that big of a threat, especially since Lyra is dead. This is what Jhenair does, though. You know, I mean, they it's just they play it too ah, slowly. They sometimes. wanted to get Trace and Mega Narf on. That's what they wanted. Oh, okay. That was yeah, the I reason suppose. behind the delay. Maybe you get it. Oh, there's Mega Narf. Goes in, the flash from Song Yun, flash from Trace, and slam him against the wall. Song Yun, Zed coming in with the ultimate. They can't save him, though. Another kill for Che. He's been taking them all today. And now, now the, the chase. chase. Wow, I'm glad we're on the same page with that one. We've seen this many times. Goodbye, Ixu. GBM with the kill. So now will they actually go for the Baron, although the TP is up. Still 35 second death timers. Well, if one person down wasn't enough, maybe two people down is. Yeah, but now the Smite's there so they can steal it. <laughs> I don't know then. Thank you, Janair. Just do the Baron. Force the fight. They can't really do much to Trace you. Trace taking a lot of damage from Lyra. Trace very, very low. Janair needs to turn it around. Trace going Meganar again. Baron going down very slowly. Deathmark on to Trace. He could get taken out. Mickey exhausted, though. He can help quite a bit. Chaser very low, Lear with a kill there, and now Anarchy turning this one around. Baron's still alive, there's a kill for Mickey. Pilot on the run, he's not gonna make it out. Maybe, maybe he can get himself executed. It looks like that's the plan, but they're just gonna turn right onto the Baron, and somehow, some way, Jinair manages oh, to man. throw it yet again. Oh man, if they can actually get this Ixu TP'd in. Trace is still here. Trace is coming back, GBM and Pilot are still up. Oh, managed to escape back to the side of the map, but there's the Baron <laughs> for Anarchy. I really think they should have just done it. Yeah, when the uh, jungler was down, when the good jungler idea. jungler was dead. What a novel idea. Well, they did kill two members coming in, but that second fight took away a lot of their HP as they just chased them around the map. And yeah. with Ixu coming back up with his TP still available, that did make it, I think, a little bit dicier. And they pay for it, so Jhenair not able to peel. Looked like there was a split call there on the Barret, too, as to whether they were going to finish it or turn. But uh, that's huge for Anarchy. The fact that they have Baron right now, that they have this empowered Zed who can just keep split pushing, has the Yomu's Ghost Blade. They can fight over this next dragon for sure, which is one of the big things that was keeping them down in this game. Jhenair can still fight yep. this. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Uh, they're going to go in anyway. Trace in a little bit of trouble. Chaser. Pilot's not there. Yeah, and Shay on the zone as well, too. Chaser trying to get away. Being chased. Mickey coming in with double buffs. There's a cocoon on the Shay, but no follow-up. Anarchy not wanting to go that far into the no. enemy jungle. Just take the dragon right now. Stop the five dragon stacking. That's what you need to do. They get it. Now they can transition, but top wave, very preferential for Anarchy right now, and they're going to get some pressure down onto the Tier 2. Nobody making a move to defend that just yet. Oh boy. Chris is there with Meganar. And he can at least take that wave out. He has no TP though, so there's absolutely yeah. no threat onto this Zed. He can just sit there. There's nothing they can do about Zed's split push right now. Wow. Pilot has to be so careful. He That's has QSS, turrets. which is huge. Jinair was in such a good position. Now, they're still probably going to be in a good position, Doa. Are they? Yes, but you know what? What? They lost to Vin Jarvin, which also is terrible in the late game, so I think all bets are off right now. That's what we said going into this one, man. You really can't, really can't make any predictions about what Jinair is going to do or not do. Now, they really should not have lost to that Vin Jarvin in the late game. They had Victor and Kogma. They had everything they needed to peel they just seemed for the to, Kog. They just seem to find like new and unique ways to lose team fights at the worst times lately. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that at all. So Snowflower. It's like they, they're done. They took out the turrets they needed to take out. They're not going to get the tier two in the top lane. So they get everything else and a huge gold swing in favor of Anarchy on a game that Jyn looked like they were 
prepared to take out pretty smoothly, but now there's a wrench in the works. Jenner has stalled out in terms of their dragon timing. They are now behind when it comes to turrets, but now the question becomes, what exactly does this Zed do now? Because it is incredibly difficult to crack an inhibitor turret by yourself in a 1v1. Yeah. So I guess the answer is wait till somebody Hide face checks Tri Brush. Brush. That's right. You know, normally you'd feel pretty comfortable saying, well, Janair, despite the setback, still has a stronger team comp late and all that, but it just doesn't seem like they can, they know how to fight, you know? So that late game team comp doesn't really make a big difference when everybody's out of position and getting assassinated. That is true. Just about the positioning right now, whether Mickey can be in the right place at that right time. Getting his Bloodthirster at the moment. So more and more damage starting to pile on, but there's already Thorn Mail for Trace and a Frozen Heart for Chaser. It's really, and then there's Zonia's and QSS, and Che is also going to be building a Frozen Heart this game, so he's basically gonna have no targets in about 10 minutes. He already only has one target, and that is Che. We are going to have to see some truly impressive Zed play for Anarchy to win. Well, luckily for Anarchy, Mickey is the type of player that can actually do that. If he can find somebody alone, but... Jin Air is in a much better situation just to continue forcing objectives. Anarchy needs to move their pinks forward very ag aggressively right now and try and make a pick with Cocoon and Twisted Advance. That is how they win this game. I definitely haven't done too much warding. Uh, Trace has his TP back up now, so maybe we will see him think about split pushing here against the Zed. He's certainly equipped to when it comes to his itemization, but GBM there for the moment has the zone his hourglass just in case there are some issues. Well, it's probably just going to go for quite a while until we have one big apocalyptic team fight. Well, not if Anarchy has their way. It's gonna be one big apocalyptic split push from Mickey. The split push to end all split pushes. And will they be able to control things like Dragon and Baron, though? I feel like that's where one, that's where this fight's gonna happen, you know? Yeah, that's the big issue. You are correct. Man. They can split push all day, but if they can't crack the base, Jinair can just walk out and fight them when Dragon comes up. That's what Jenner is banking on right now, if they can team fight properly, but the issue behind what Jenner is doing is they have no wards. As we're taking a look right now, they have no vision because the lanes have been pushed up and they've been afraid of walking in there. They know the power of Anarchy's picks. So Anarchy is controlling the majority of the warding. Pretty much. Okay. Mickey still looking at this minion wave. He doesn't have that TP, so they may try and trade Baron for something like an inhibitor if they can. As Jin Air certainly has the position. They're starting to push out right now. You can see the top jungle just peppered with blue wards, though, from Anarchy, so they're going to know every move that Jin Air makes. Finally, Mickey is going to be rejoining his team. Wants to go back and chop, finish off that Bloodthirster. Nope. Uh, maybe he doesn't have time. Janair moving up towards the Baron pit right now. They're trying to intercept Nar before he can get there. And it looks like they will for now. Yeah, it looks like they'll just weak through. Yeah, it's backing off. Janair moving some of their members back into the mid lane to prevent some of their teammates from getting cut off of each other. Mickey looks like he will have time to go back and purchase. Has 2,000 gold right now. Spends it all in one fell swoop. That Bloodthirster and picks up some Merc Treads too. And Janair can pretty comfortably choose what objective they're going to go for here. But with Dragon and Baron coming up at the same time, it is kind of awkward for Janair too because you, you're in a position where you might have to give up one of them. Well, Jinner can always just solo the dragon with Corky right now. He's got Blade of the oh, Ruin okay. King, so there's no real need to come in. Well, they're going to go for it. They yeah, know the pilot's there. Yeah, they know that Corky's uh, not around at the moment. 
Can they find the pick, though? They caught Trace, but Trace is about to go Meganar. He's going to be huge in a moment. Comes back up right at the right time, and Anarchy trying to force this one. Pilot comes into the fight as well. Four-man taunt from Snowflower, but no real follow-up. Mickey tries to get a kill. Oh, manages to pick off Chaser. Where'd he go? Gets back out again. Somehow, some way. Oh, doesn't quite get out all the way, though. There's a kill for Pilot. Flash Death Sentence does not connect. And Jin is going to be content just to go for the Baron, maybe. Well, it's still going to be a 4v4 in this Baron. GBM wants to make the play. Here comes Trace. Yep, and Lear taking a lot of damage. He's getting cooked very heavily. Great up. Trace coming in, and GBM with another kill. Yeah, and that's the thing. Jin is just playing stronger in team fights. They don't even need to have necessarily a good team fight. They just need to have a not terrible team fight, and they can win this. Just like we just saw. Well, they, Anarchy really tried to force that. Yeah. Far too much. Well, credit to Mickey. He managed to find a kill in all of that. I'm surprised he actually got in there. But they yeah. did come back into that choke point, knowing that there wasn't the AOE damage from Anarchy, so they could just cluster together right like that and make it very difficult for Mickey to get his abilities off while they were all mashed up together. So that is now four dragons for Jin Air. Once again, even though they're down on gold, they put themselves back into a position that you think they could turn into a win, but but, it, but it's Janair, so who knows? Who knows indeed. And they, while they may have taken that dragon, they didn't take the more immediate power when it comes to the Baron. Yeah. So there's still that outside shot that Anarchy may be able to do something here, especially now that Jinair is it again in a situation where they have a TP down. If Mickey goes into the bottom lane, somebody's going to have to follow him, or Jinair is going to have to commit to the Baron immediately. Well, Mickey's going to have to go into the bottom lane soon. Somebody will, because that's a huge wave coming for Jinair right now. Here we go. Yep, they're going to go for this Baron. And Anarchy really needs to stop this from happening. They're coming in now. Baron getting lower. Anarchy, this is Engage. Twist advance, they're gonna get in the back lines with this Maokai. Culling does a lot of damage to Chaser. Baron very, very low, it's up for grabs. Will it get taken? It does! Lyra steals the Baron away, and Anarchy getting the kills now! Mickey kills a Meganar, double kill, going crazy here. There goes Che, Ixu picks one up. Like we said, I just said it, I just said it, it's Jinair. Yeah. So you don't know. And right there what happened was a split call. Chaser got killed at the beginning of that fight by a culling from Song Yoon. And then it was so easy. All Lyra had to do was repel straight onto the Baron and burst it down. And this could now, this possibly be, be the, the end game. Of the game. Might this be could the be the game. series. They're going to bull rush their way through the space so fast. Yeah, I mean, there's 10 seconds for Chaser. A lot of time left before Trace and GBM show up. So this is going to be it. It's either going to be very close or it's going to be the end of the game. The way those Nexus turrets are going down, it's not looking good for Jin Air. The they lost to Spenu, and they are going to go down 2-0 to Anarchy. Wow. Welcome to the new world, guys. What do you say about that? What an improbable end to that game. We saw Anarchy win that fight and take the Baron after killing Chaser at the beginning. Yeah. Jin Air's Baron calls really poor this game. Overall, they couldn't turn in time or finish the Baron in time. Anarchy just had their number and said, Vicky said remains undefeated, <laughs> improbably. It's, oh, it just doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. And while Jin Air looked more solid in, in terms of their shot calling in maybe the first 20 minutes or so. 